Yeah, we're going to do a mic check in a second as soon as we do our opening shot. Normally, the bands do shots with us. Oh, well. Because he just quit drinking and quit smoking. But I'll, I'll, so I'll take, I'll take uh, yeah, alcohol and cigarette free, but I'll smoke some weed. Yeah, I smoke some weed is a tough for us. And uh, I only drink brandy. Brandy's Unless good. Unless I'm with my brother and he's force-feeding me some whiskey, but I mean, I'm not a whiskey guy. Yeah, you I like vodka, too, Mr. Oh, well, I like Mr. Vodka. Martini. Mr. Martini. No good mood. Just give me a glass of vodka. I'm happy. Shake it. Don't stir it. And make sure there's a little tiny ice crystal swirl in it. My name is Yates. Very particular. Clyborn Yates. Here you go, Cole. You got the greens. Oh, it's I always know. So you don't smoke. Oh, you weed. don't. No. Oh, okay. Well, at least you have you your smoke, extra you don't drink. We could, you know, I, yeah, I, I do. Don't. Everybody's got their really. voices. Yeah. Miami voices. I don't. Uh, I stopped doing Cheers, it because you're going to have a great interview. I didn't seem to be getting any. Cheers, interview. friendships, and uh, yes, cheers. It's not too hot today. I don't have AC. Sometimes fans come in here and it's. They walk in, walk, turn around, and walk right back out because it's just so hot in here. Well, I see. I was trying to get a band together, and I was auditioning bass players, and bass play, we were in the basement, and uh, it was the middle of summer. And he goes, you don't have AC here? He goes, well, no, I mean, he's a fan. Bring a fan. You know, he's like, oh, no. Puts his bass down. He goes, I can't be in a band. I can't rehearse anywhere where there's no AC. That was pretty big, you know. So what? I was like, but there's the fucking door. Don't let it hit you in the ass. I was pissed off about it. Wait all, you know, wait wait all week for this guy's going to come down Saturday. We're going to audition him, get the whole band down here to audition him. And the guy walks out because it's, it's too hot. Remember when, when, when Cameron Bontrager was here? Yeah. 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 He was playing in the kitchen. He took his shirt off to do his live stuff. Yeah, I thought he was going to get naked. Because it, it was, was hot so fucking here. hot that year. Last summer. Was no, two, two summers, summers ago. ago yeah. But it was, it was, I, I was absolutely surprised when he just took his shirt off and started playing. Let's do a mic check. That's one, too. I know mine is always the same. Of course, he's young enough to check. take his shirt off. Wait it? a minute. Microphone check. Hang on a two, minute. Two. Okay, go. Microphone check. One, two, one, two. Is that the way you're going to talk about the time? I'll probably talk about this loud. Probably about there. You're good. Somewhere in there. Test one, two, one, two. Somewhere in that range. Is that good for you? Yeah. Okay, here we go. <coughs> Record it analog. I go to digital later. You'll blow your mind. That's all I can tell you. And in studio tonight. We've got Mr. Insincere here, Gary Turner. Thanks. How you doing, man? Doing good. Floyd Bavada, how you doing, girl? I'm good. Thanks for coming in, Gary. Oh, lovely to have you. Uh, lovely to have myself here. Jesus. <laughs> First time on the couch of truth. And uh, <clears throat> so this should be interesting. Why don't you just introduce yourself to the audience and uh, tell them uh, who you are and what you do. Make it short, though, you know, it's one paragraph. Or My name's Gary Turner. I play almost all the instruments in the band Insincere, which I am pretty much the only member of, but Jeff Ward plays the drums when I'm in the studio. Thanks, yeah. Jeff. Are you originally from Western New York? I was born and raised pretty much in North Tonawanda. I think that qualifies. North Tonawanda is like a twilight zone. It almost doesn't fall. <laughs> okay, so insincere. Where, why, did, why insincere? When I was a kid, I kind of just had this feeling that any great band should have three syllables for the crowd to <laughs> chant when they're waiting for you to come out, you know? So I thought, insincere. <clears throat> and, you know, it was a good chant, so I kept it. Okay. All right. Um, so how long have you has insincere been in insincere insincering <laughs> um let's see uh for my 15th birthday my sister got me uh some recording studio time at outer limit and i recorded uh four songs back then and one of them actually was almost on a movie soundtrack with the goo goo dolls uh but the movie wow. never ended up getting made it was supposed to be about buffalo bands 
and I was pretty excited about it, and it didn't happen. One of the producers backed out, but a gentleman by the name of Ed Hecht had a TV show called My City Underground. It was on, like, the cable access, 18 in Buffalo, mm -hmm. and so he made a music video for the song Confirmation, and it played on there from, like, they made a best of filler tape, and it played from 97 till about 2004. It was, like, wow. on, like, eight times a day. You could have saw that video. It was crazy. People didn't believe me until they were smoking a blunt in their basement and flipping <laughs> their channels, and it came on. They're like, holy hell. <laughs> so a long so, time, yeah. Yeah, so has it always just been you? Yeah, it's always just been me. Okay. And how would you describe your music? I don't know. Like, I mean, it's rock-ish. You know, rock, folk, most of the time acoustic. I didn't. I never had a drummer, so for a while I was a, I was calling it industrial acoustic rock, you know, because I'd have like you know electric drums. Have some fun with those sometimes. Okay, well we're gonna play something off of your um, CD. What do you want to hear? Uh, if you guys want to play Phantom Limbs, that's uh, that's a fun cruising in the car like uh, summer song, you know, with the windows down. You know that good song comes on while you're cruising. It's oh, one yeah. of those. Two. Well. I had that feeling in mind when I wrote it. And the wind's blowing through your hair. Yeah, the wind's blowing through your hair. Nice, nice day like today. It's a beautiful day for a drive. Yeah. Last this song. Okay, so this is Phantom Limbs. Phantom Limbs, yes. Gary Turner and Sincere. Okay. Now I'll play the song. That's how it works. All right. Uh, that way there's no fuck-ups. Okay, so they're, they're hearing the song live. Like, I mean, they're hearing it. We don't hear what they're going to do, right? These people, I'll play it on the acoustic <laughs> for you. Because um, we can't hear what's going out on the radio. Yeah, we're so. yeah, yeah, we're going to get it. Oh, well, well, I'll play the back speaker. But I got I want to get a sound check on it first. And, uh, oh, okay. Cue it up and all that wonderful stuff. Oh, okay. So that was that you were recording the intro. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's cool. Neat. I like that. I never got to do this before. It's for radio. anybody watching, it's, it's this, is how, this is how pre-recorded radio. Pre radio works. This is how we do it anyway. This is how most people do it. It's like a theatrical production. Yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, at the end of our post every week, it says that uh, podcasts inspire escapism. So when you, we could be anywhere in the world, we could be broadcasting from here, and we can say, oh, we're in Borneo today. And I run the appropriate sound bed, and everybody thinks you're in Borneo. Of course, when we do that, we really do go to Borneo. Um... But that's the beauty of radio. Who was that guy that got famous uh, doing the, uh, the Halloween broadcast back in the 40s of we were being invaded by aliens? I actually, have a, wow. I actually have that on cassette. I found it on cassette at a Salvation Army. Orson Welles. Orson, was it Orson Welles? Orson Welles, yeah. Pure genius. Tricked everybody. They all oh thought a real God. invasion was coming. That's the beauty of radio. Now, on TV, you can't do that. King Kong. They can't do it on TV, but on the radio, you can do anything. So, we do anything here, folks. If I could only program this song, we'd be good. Well, screw with me. Phantom Limbs, you said? Yeah.
slap rack. This song was really big in South Korea, actually. For like, well, there's a good like, American pop rap shit in Asia. Yes, like, for like a good like couple of months, like this song was around like 12,000 streams in America, and then number two, it was like at like 1,600 streams Korea. in South Korea. I'm like, that's just cool. I'm like, how did they even find out about this song? You know what I mean? They're smarter than we are. But this was South Korea was the number two country for this song on my charts for a while. Yeah. But yeah, can you get the sense of like cruising in the in the car, like they like today, just bumping it, especially the solo yeah. coming off. Right. The top down. We got people in, in South Africa that listen to this, and they're gonna be exposed all over the place. Oh, they love me in South Africa. <laughs> they're gonna know you then. A lot of people in Brazil like this song too. Brazil. Yeah, like, because on Spotify, like, yeah, for artists, has a show like a, where people in the world a, listen, has sort of a Argentino. You know, nice beat. I can picture some guy in an old 57 Cadillac cruising through, like, the curving mountains and stuff. It's bumping that. Probably got, like, two kilos of coke in the back of it, you know? Yeah, that is a good old trip through the mountains. <laughs> How I even got into playing guitar. Because the how oh, it starts we were is funny. There, yeah. That's in there? Oh, okay. Yeah, that one's funny. People compared this to Nirvana. Say I'm bringing back that Seattle sound, you know. Turner and Sincere doing Phantom Limbs. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So, Gary, how old were you when you first played your very first instrument? Was it the recorder? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I, I probably always played around with stuff growing up, but uh, I didn't really get serious until... Um, yeah, it was probably like the summer when I was 12, maybe like 93 or something. I was coming home from my cousin's house. And normally when I come home from his house, I take Niagara Street. It was like, you know, along Pinewoods Park in North Tonawanda. And one day I was walking home and I was like, oh, Faulkner Street. There was a street before Niagara. And I'm like, I'm going to go down Faulkner today. Faulkner for the fuck of it. Yeah, Faulkner. Yeah, so I'm, I'm walking down Faulkner, and I'm singing. I'm like, Faulkner for the fuck of it, Faulkner for the fuck of it. And all of a sudden, I look to my left, and in the garbage was a Fender acoustic guitar. No way. It, it had the, the face of it was coming off a little bit, and it needed some strings. So I took it home, got some wood glue and a C-clamp, clamped it up, glued it, put some new strings on it, and I had that guitar from that day all the way until about like four years ago. Well, my ex-wife made me mad one time, and I happened to be playing that guitar, and I, I smashed it. Oh. <laughs> I was so sad. But I had it since I was, like, 12. The guitar was a rescue, man. It was but, a rescue guitar. But uh, that just goes to show you, though, like, you know, because I was saying about it, my whole entire life could have been different if I didn't take Faulkner for the fuck of it. If I just took Niagara like I always took, I didn't find that guitar. Maybe I didn't start playing music. 
So it was so tired. everything happened because of Faulkner for the fuck of it one day, you know? He played guitar, so that was it. 12 years old. Well, just taking the wrong way home one day is like what led me on the path, you know? And then I, I started okay. playing it all the time. I wrote a song for church uh, when I got confirmed. Then I wrote um, a bunch of songs and went in the studio when my sister bought me that album time when I was 15. Did you take so. lessons or were you self taught? No, I just pretty much, I'd listen to something and I'd just start playing along. Really? Yeah. I just knew the basic, you know, open chord notes and everything else is just, you know, figure it out where they are. Do you, do you play any other instruments? I play everything but the drums, yeah. Jeff Ward plays those. Play keyboards? I have a piano in my kitchen. <laughs> Okay, and bass, of course. And, yeah. You know. Well, I don't. I, I'm not actually a bass player, and any bass player who listens to my bass playing will tell you, yeah, that's a guitar player playing bass. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell if you're a bass just player. Do it for your recordings. Yeah, I, I do do it in the studio. Okay. I, I play the bass in the studio too. So yeah, so any any bass player listening to my stuff uh, uh, that's out there, they they know. You sing harmonies with yourself and everything. No, I never really, I never really did backup vocals for my own stuff. Like oh. I kind of just, I pretty much like I just go into it. That's the next thing, man. You know, boom, right there. Well, a lot Plenty of these of harmonies, man. A lot of these songs that are out right now, I was just recording them to get the single out. I had some okay. health issues in 2020. Because so some of these songs have been recorded. I mean, they they've been. I wrote them a while ago. Okay. And in 2020, I almost, I almost died. So I was wow. like, oh man, I better get in the studio and start recording these songs before I can. So, like a wild man for the past two years, anytime I have extra money, I'm in the studio wasting it on songs to play for you guys. Okay. When you were growing up, was there a musical thing in your house a lot? You know, my mom was into, like, Phil Collins and Pink Floyd and the Beatles. <laughs> you know? But I, I prefer Genesis pre-76. I won't say that. My mom's into Pink Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do a nice cover of Mother, and I think of her. Sweet. Yeah. <coughs> so who are some of your biggest influences? I'd say, like, my top five would be, like, Pink Floyd, um, Nirvana, Muse, um, Radiohead, and Nine Inch Nails. Mostly just because Trent always did everything himself, too. Trent never had a band, so I'm, like, I'm kind of like Trent in my own way. Mm -hmm. He's a Nine Inch Nails fan. we got to watch out for him. <laughs> we keep one eye on this guy. I think I can hear him. So, when you are listening to music, what do you usually listen to? I kind of like to absorb like the emotion of the song. I don't really listen to anything in particular. I know, like, I, maybe it's because I play everything. Like, certain... Like, if you ask somebody, if you ask a guitar player, he's going to be listening to the guitar part the whole time. That's all he hears. If you're a drummer, that's all you're listening to is the drum. Same thing with the bass or the vocals. And Sometimes I really just try to just sit back and close my eyes and imagine, like, if I was in the room while it was happening and just what the feeling of it, you know, how I feel while I'm listening to it. If I get a good feeling, or I like things when they're catchy, too. I write a lot of catchy stuff. I don't that's do it on good. purpose, but... But that's good, because catching is good. Big money and jingles. I wrote in a couple of jingles. Really? I got I got the Brush Your Teeth song. I wrote that for my daughter when she was a kid. Um, <laughs> she was like two, and all the kids around here, they wanted to hang out with her. And so they come knocking on my door. I started doing a summer camp on my front porch, and they wanted me to play my guitar. And I'm like, I can't play Smash and Pumpkins and Nirvana and Weezer for these kids. <laughs> So as I'm walking down the stair with my guitar, I'm like, what's a good thing for kids to do? And I'm like, ah, brush your teeth. And I'm like, and how do they do it? I'm like, up and down, you know? So I wrote this song. It's called Brush Your Teeth. Here, hold this for a second. I'll just, I'll give you guys just a quick. So, you know, I know this isn't part of your thing, but. So this is just for the kids. It goes, so brush, brush, brush your teeth up and down. Cause if you don't. So what do we do? You ready? We're gonna brush, brush, 
I was thinking about selling that to like Crest or Colgate or something. They probably like that, you know. The kids for like kids, it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I still have to yell at my kids to brush their teeth all the, all the time. I'm like, you know, I wrote this song. You think you guys would know better by now? <laughs> right. Um. Okay, Clapper. Well, we have a question here. I'd be asking everybody this question. You're going on a, uh, say you're going on a deserted island. It's not really deserted. I mean, you got to have the uh, women there. <laughs> Booze. Auto train. If that's cool. Yachts. You go snorkeling. Sure. Lots of N.A. Uh, not up, up here. No, I don't drink that crap. You know, all I need is iced tea. tea. That's actually all I drink. I'm oh. sponsored by Lipton. Lipton, send me some iced tea. We'll bring in about 10 gallons of iced tea for you. Mm-hmm. But there's no music. Well, Jesus. I just have my acoustic. No. Well, well I would know, make an instrument out of something. You can you can bring your own instrument, but you can only bring one one album with you to listen to. Okay, that's easy. Pink Floyd's a collection of dance songs. I mean, just because it has like probably like anything you'd ever need. I mean, is I don't that, even have to get it. Is that the one with the couple that are tied to? Yeah, the yeah, band. that they're dancing on the on the cover. Yeah. See, that's the one I do not have. That's that's the best that's one. The greatest hits, it though, is. Right? Well, it's it's not really a greatest hit. It's just all you need for a deserted island. It's a collection of great dance songs. I mean, even if you're dancing I along, gotta, I got a hammer. Get it for him for his birthday. He, I, he just had his birthday. Oh, see the There's a card. I know. <laughs> Christmas is related. Christmas, Christmas, is coming. Christmas. Halloween present. So Everybody loves a good Halloween present. Have to wait till Christmas. Do they advertise it that way? Everything you need for a dozen islands. What? No. No, Pink Floyd never did that. <laughs> I know, just kidding. I mean, you know, maybe Sid wouldn't have minded it. That was like the only album he needed when he secluded himself in the mountains. Sid, just Sid, took was, that gone. Album Sid was gone by then, though. Well, like, he, they sent it to him, so he could listen to it. <laughs> I mean, Wish You Were Here was on it. I'm sure they sent it to him, right? Well, that was just a little tongue in cheek. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to play another song off your disc. What do you want to hear? Um, let's play These Guys Dying Saints. That's a good one. That one I played the bass for, and any bass player who listens to that one will be like, wow, Gary, your bass playing is getting better. <laughs> okay, Diane Saints, Gary Turner, and Sincere. Yeah, I'll fix that. Yeah, we'll edit the, uh, the good shout out. Yes, yeah. Sorry. No, sorry. You I'm very close better be. I'm very clumsy. That's why I broke my back twice. I'm clumsy too. But guess what? You win. No, you win. You win with that for years. Unless I break, unless I break my leg, you won. You don't have to worry about that shit. You can keep it. I don't want nothing to do with that. That's faceless victim. That's the wrong one. What are we doing? Dying saints. Damn it. <laughs> Confusing me. I'm playing faceless victims live on the acoustic in the kitchen. That's right. So what are we doing? Dying saints? Dying saints, yeah. It's the one that goes like this. I don't know them. <laughs> Oh, I sent all four of them. Oh, wait a minute. 
Well, no, I got one. How many get one? The files, the files oh. were, I sent all four in one thing out yeah, of the task, nice. and his internet work. was going through too slow, no, and he was work. saying there was only one, but they kept downloading as okay, he was waiting. Better, we better take him we'll he was just one at a time. Cause it he took was about patient. half an hour to do uh, 15 four, minutes worth of Four minutes. songs. <laughs> wow. You have no patience. The internet was slow, that's all. It wasn't his fault. No, I don't think it was the internet. I think it was... I was just, sending them uh, from my phone. It could have been my phone's internet. You didn't know they were all in one file. That's, that's, that's it, yeah. That's why. He thought it was only one song.
the faceless victim song is so much. Rock. Period. Pop rock. Pop rock. Pop rock. Pop rock. Acoustic pop rock. Acoustic pop rock. I'm like on my own little sub 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 genre. You're I'm, I'm not commercial. Rock. Rock. What do you think? Good music. It's just good music. And about a month from now, I'm gonna say, Chloe, what the fuck is this? Right on here, what that is? She's gonna go. It's acoustic pop rock. No, it's... I, I'm fair to look at you. 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 Well, on, on Facebook, it says yeah. insincere Buffalo, New York industrial acoustic rock. Because I was and trying to have a poll about Google. We don't Google spires. We're supposed we to pick that up. We know where you're from. They don't know where... No, the Google spires were supposed to pick it up. That's why I put it in the name. Oh, here we go. We're back. We're not going live. And we're back. <laughs> not live. Uh, how you doing? As he smokes weed all over America. Ah, uh, they, they know what they're in for. Yeah. What I do in my time is my time. Wow, see? Write that down. A uh, bowl of ancient proverbs that I quote myself on all the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we're going to ask you a couple questions and you're going to go live, 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 live. you want to stand up or sit in the kitchen? Oh, in the kitchen? Yeah, if you guys got a chair, because I didn't bring a strap. Okay, so he's going to sit down in your chair. Yeah. You don't need well, to I like, I can just take that blue one. Anyway. I can just take that blue one. That's fine. Oh, that one you don't want to see. Oh, is that the camp chair? It might break, yeah. No, it's, oh. it's uh, in dire shape. All right. And the name was that was That was Dying Saints. Dying Saints. I knew that. You know, three minutes later. Yeah, it's a long song. <laughs> I think no, that one's like no five mind. minutes, I yeah, swear. Yeah, it was a little over five minutes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's an epic song, you know. I think no. epic songs need to be around five. Regular songs are about 330. 333 is a good number for, like, your radio song. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But, like, if, if you're trying to get that, like, somebody's favorite song on the album, it's usually about five minutes and four seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but a good summer song would run about three and a half. I, I think that's what that's what uh, Phantom Limbs is, somewhere around, like, 342, something like that. Unless you really, like, want to bang them and, and split in two and a half, 350. Oh, well, that's, I got a, I got a couple coming up like yeah. that. My, my Halloween song and my Christmas song. I'll be in the studio. The one you were just screwing around with at the beginning. Yeah. What was it? Which one? Oh, that's the one I remember. I, I got the home from work the did. other day. The one you just did. I don't know which one it was. Man. What, the Brush Your Teeth song? Yeah. No, that's something I wrote for like my a bunch of kids. That's when, a hit, that's, dude. That's, that's, a, that's a jingle. That's a two and a half minute hit. That's, a, that's, that's a, like that's like a two and a half million this. dollar jingle if Crest is ready to pay I off. I need his toothbrushing sounds. Dude, you put a guitar solo in there or maybe a keyboard solo in there and you got a hit. I, I got a couple hits. They're coming out soon now. You're just flying right out of his ass. He can't help it. Well, that's, that's, I got to get him out while I can that's what you, that's that's what you do. Okay. Yeah, so. you get constipated. Yep, yep. Don't want to have song constipation. That's nope. the worst. Let it rip. Yep, let it rip. Take uh, it. You know, when when because <laughs> because you don't want to get in a, uh in a rut. What is it? What do they call it? A writer's writer's uh, block. Yeah, I don't have that problem. Like I, I'm just walking around and I'm. I'm Someday when you're 50 years old, you're going to go, fuck, I got right. I, I hope that never happens. I mean, that's why I got the piano in the kitchen. Because, like, my coffee will be in the microwave or my pizza will be in the oven. I'll have, I'll have a Piece reason to be coffee, there for, like, six piano, minutes. I just sit down and just start jamming while I'm waiting. I'm like, oh, I got six minutes. See, but what Billy Joel did because he ate too much pizza. Ah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's what I do. Gary Turner, Insincere. So, what was the name of the studio where you recorded this and where you recorded at 15? Yeah, actually, it's the same place. Um, when I was uh, 15 years old, my sister Lori, I think she actually worked with uh, one of the guys from Outer Limit Recording Studio. And uh, so I recorded with Ken when I was 15. And then just a couple of years ago, when I almost died, I was like, damn, I got to get back in the studio. I just called Ken. I'm like, Ken, what do you got available? Let me get in. I, I got to record this song, Faceless Victims. So, Ken, Ken Rakowski. 
Yeah, he's an amazing engineer. So if you hear any of my tunes and you're like, wow, this sounds great, he's the one to thank for it. He makes me sound great. Okay, so you play everything on this except for the drums. Yes. Yes. And the drums are played by? Jeff Ward. He's, he's amazing. Most of the time, like, I'll book like four hours because that's all I could afford, you know? So I'll spend like the first three hours recording the guitar, the bass, the vocals, the piano, another guitar if I have to. And then Jeff comes in with like an hour. He's never even played the song before, barely even heard it. And he'll just play through like four wow. times. And then like maybe the fifth time, if he's lucky, we'll do it in one take. And it's like, wow, that's perfect. Cut, put it on. Like I am blessed to have a studio drummer that good. Like he is, I can't even say how more amazing Jeff is. I'd be screwed without him. Most of my songs, they sound good because the drums are awesome. You know, they're weird off timing. Love it. So there's a lot of overdubbing. No, I mean everything's just pretty much done in one take. I think uh, my song how "Clouded do, Skies." How do you do all the? the well, I mean, yeah, I guess that's overdubbing. So I go in the studio yeah. and we'll do like a we'll do a scratch track <laughs> of me with the guitar. And then I'll, then I'll do the bass, and I'll do the piano. So, yeah, I overdub that a lot of it, yeah. Yeah, of course okay, you yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, do you enjoy recording in the studio? Yeah, I, I, I like it. I've always been a fan of recording. Even when I was a kid, I had, like, two, like, Casio cassette players. And I'd put a cassette in one and hit record. And then I'd, I'd like, jam a riff. And then I'd take it out and put that into the other tape player and hit play and then record on another tape and just keep going back and forth until it was almost unlistenable. Uh -huh. But I had what I wanted. <laughs> it was good for the 93, 94. Okay. <laughs> um, which do you prefer, recording in the studio or performing live? Oh, I really like performing live. I, I, In fact, I think I sound better when I'm live. I feed off the energy of the crowd. Like, we're in the studio. I'm just like, eh. I'm just doing it to get it done. You know, it's probably like take 37 by now on something. I'm usually actually pretty good about the vocals. That's why they sound bad. You know, because I only give myself like four takes anyway. I'm like, yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> Do you rehearse a lot before you go to the studio? Well, I rehearse almost uh, every Saturday at Pinewoods Park. Uh, me and my daughter will go there. Um, I'll play from like two to four. I'll go through my set. Like I have an hour long set and I'll just go through it twice. Just full, full balls to the wall in the middle of the park. My daughter's off playing. I'm jamming. Sometimes people will come up and be like, oh, I like that. I'm like, here's the thing. I'm on YouTube or Spotify, wherever. Go look me up. Mm -hmm. little, little flyer, piece of paper. Yeah, tip jar out there. No, no tip charge. I don't want your money. If somebody gives me money, what I do is I take my Sharpie and I write the name of, in, I write Insincere Clouded Skies, whatever new single came out. Do I'll write brush, it. You don't do any breast game? No, no, I don't take your money. I, I take my Sharpie and I write the name of my song and give it back. I don't want anybody's money. Okay. So how long does it take you to record, say, one song? About four hours, yeah. Okay. Sounds like cool. Well, are you ready to play live for us? Yeah, I, I can play live for you guys. Um, I'm going to do, uh, let's see, I'll do um, Faceless Victims was a song that I wrote on, on the piano. In fact, I'll tell the little story, because this is what kind of started it all. I almost, like, after I almost died in 2020, I got better, and then I almost died again in, like, February of 21. Like, I just, my hemoglobin went, like, to unhuman levels. It was, like, 1.3. Well, like, you're supposed to be at, like, 4.6 to 6.4. I was at 1.3. Extremely anemic. Yeah, something like that. I, it, I shouldn't even been up walking, talking, or alive, but there I was. You know, the doctors just threw their hands up in the air. I'm like, they didn't even have an answer of why or how. So when I got home, I had this, like, this melody playing in my head. And I sat down on my piano in the kitchen, and that became Faceless Victims. And that's what made me go into the studio. I wrote the, I wrote the piano for it, like, the end of February of 21. I wrote the lyrics for it on Good Friday. And I went in the studio, I think, either... On Easter or the week after Easter and recorded it? No, not on Easter. So we were close. But the week after, the following Sunday, I went and recorded it. It was out sometime in May. And uh, I, I can't perform it live because nobody ever has a piano, and I hate bringing a, a big p a keyboard with me, you know. So I never played it for anybody live until recently. I, I made an acoustic version. And oh. I've been playing it for about three weeks now. I, I, 
I even, I actually, I just played a show uh, at the Buffalo Wing and Brew House in North Tonawanda mm-hmm. last Saturday, and I came up with the acoustic version just so I had another song to add to my set list. So, like, I, I only wrote this song for them, basically. Like, if it wasn't for the Buffalo Brew House, you guys wouldn't even have Faceless Victims acoustic. I would have kept the piano. I mean, eventually, but who knows for how long, you know? You got a little sooner than expected. So I'll go do that for you guys in the kitchen. I'll bring my tripod out there for these people, and okay. you guys could pause that. I'll see you soon. Awesome. Very cool. You guys are going to do some traveling. Very, very badly. We'll do a break. See you in the kitchen for live performances. Amazing.